everybody, this is Miss Heather and Miss Rachel, and it is time for Gardening with the Gals. Woo All right, so today we have a few things we're going to discuss with you, and it's going to be mainly talking about the maintenance of your garden. Mm -hmm. Yay. Uh, mainly uh, maintaining, and this is not just for something you do in a week. This is constant, like, almost like a chore, mm -hmm. but it's nicer because it's a garden, and we love those. So... Um, first and most, keep up with your weeding. Those things yes. are awful. Mm -hmm. They will, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with um, weeds and how they work. So basically what they'll do is their roots will either overtake that of other plants and steal their nutrients, which they can mm -hmm. get from the soil, their water, or basically they can also kind of break down and crush roots of your plants mm -hmm. so they suck you need to get those guys out of here yeah um what are some of your like do you have any tips and tricks to make weeding easier um the thing i find is when i love my husband death but sometimes it's not as considerate when he mows and the shoot is facing towards my tire garden my container garden and whatever he mows gets you know chopped up and pushed out the chute, well, sometimes I get that residual stuff. I have to go through and pick up all the debris that the mower has pushed out. So that's going to be your grass. It's going to be weeds that are going to mix in there. I mean, we don't have a perfect lawn. So mm -hmm. um, I have weeds that grow in there. I tend to go there after he gets everything done and the trimming too. Um, I go and take that stuff out of my tire garden because I don't want it to get roots because weeds will grow Anywhere they're growing a sidewalk in the road if it if it has the chance and opportunity to find a good crack in some soil. Um, I do that and I just on the daily try to go, if not every day, um, if if not every day, it's every other day. I try to keep up on that because it will choke out your other plants and like she said, it will take nutrition and maybe even take over different roots and you'll just have a weed garden if you don't do that on the daily. Um, that's one thing that I've noticed with my container garden since I've had uh, experience with open uh, gardening when mm -hmm. I was younger and now container gardening now that I'm older, there is a lot less weeds in my container garden and I have um, mulch around my container garden and it's just to add a little pop of color to go with the green and also to kind of keep it separate from my yard because when I built them I didn't have in mind oh I need to mow in between those <laughs> so I ended up just laying down newspaper and then putting mulch over it so I don't mow near my gardens which is nice because then I don't you know like mm -hmm. your husband <laughs> risk getting stuff into those okay. gardens then you know weeds coming in and just taking over the place yep. so that's something I've noticed a tip that my mom used when I was young and I'm sure your mom used you've used everyone uses it laying down newspapers mm -hmm. or making pathways that are like stepping stones in your garden yep. just to take up like area that's not being used for your actual plants it also takes area up area that then weeds can't you know use to Parade grow in. and stuff like that the newspaper mm -hmm. will block out light and obviously plants need light for photosynthesis mm -hmm. aka making food <laughs> and so they just don't really tend to grow there unless something gets under and they slowly build up mm -hmm. that rarely happens so that's a tip that I've used I haven't had to use it because my container mm -hmm. gardens don't have a huge problem with it um but in that that's you know one mm -hmm. way to stop them like I said stepping stones I use them uh also just to make a nice path so that if I need to sit down I can just give it a little brush and then sit down on the stone rather than it like if it's just rain putting my you know, just saying right in the mud, basically. Mm. So there are a couple of different ways you can help prevent it, but weeding is just something that comes with gardening, mm. and it's really important to stay on top of it. Um, I kind of find it therapeutic if I'm having mm. a stressful day and I go out at night. Sometimes I will take my aggravation out on the weeds if I, for some reason, there's a lot of, like, weed spores that are in the air, or, like I said, the mower has pushed everything into my gardens. Um, I just use it as a good kind of a workout and it's a good for my mental health because that helps me, I can take my aggravation out on like whatever greenery that is not supposed to be and I can just pull it out and then get it out of my system. That's how I do it. Yeah, and <laughs> as we've mentioned, I think once or twice in past videos, if your kids do something they shouldn't, 
Make them weed. Make them weed. And then it's off of your hands. Yep. Um, something I do suggest in weeding is always have, like, some sort of stool or mm-hmm. tiny little, like, one-step ladder just so you can sit on and it's not as hard to get up and off, like, off the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally have a lot of knee issues, so it's always nice to have, you know, a little elevation. It's mm-hmm. not as much I need to get up on. Um, Another thing can be they have, like, foam pads. That you yes. can sit on, and I'm pretty sure they sell them pretty much everywhere at Garden Seasoning. Um, I do that because um, my garden's very, very low. Hers is a little bit more raised than mine. Mm-hmm. So I will do that or grab a towel and kind of roll it up because I, too, don't have the greatest knees. Um, jeans. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's what I do if yeah. I'm having a rough day with my knees. I just do one of those two and just go about my business. My grandma had one of the most nifty tools that I'd ever seen, and it was like a little cart that she would sit down on. It had wheels. She would sit on it and pull weeds. And um, underneath, the seat would lift up. So she had her gloves. She had her trimming tools and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And she would just sit in her garden. She'd pick one place, and then she'd roll right over to the (laughs) next. It was amazing. She also used it for, like, many other things. If we had to – she had a dog named Wags. Wags. He had a lot of hair. So, you know, during the summer, we had to shave him to keep him cool, which is also a really important tip to do for your dogs. Um, she used it for that and kept some of those tools, like maybe scissors in there. So that's something you can probably find at Walmart, Lowe's, mm-hmm. maybe Menards. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's really nice, especially if, like, you have just one whole row to go down. You don't have to, like, get up, pick it up, move it. Yeah. Got little wheels to go on. Yep. So that was something my grandma had, had. I loved it. I thought it was adorable. And it also worked for her um, really well because she, you know, in her old age, it would have been really hard to keep moving Go through along. that. Yeah. But yeah, so most important, keep up with your weeding. Yes. Otherwise, you're just going to have a box or, you know, another yard. Um, mm-hmm. Something else that we've talked briefly about is watering your plants. Yes. I think we've talked about doing it in morning and night. Morning and night. And, you know, we've also discussed uh, different types of plants um, and when you should water those. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, we will be having a guest speaker. She is actually my current botany professor. Um, she will come in and something that I will ask her to talk about are the different types of plants and when to water them. So that will be an awesome video for you guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy the little science spiel we'll do. Um, I know I do because (laughs) I love it. So hopefully you guys will as well. Um, The last thing I think we need to talk about for maintaining is pollinators and pests. Yes. That includes control. So as we all know, number one pollinator, bees. Honeybees. They're fuzzy. They're cute. They save your plants. Um, And then butterflies as well. Mm -hmm. They have little hairs on their feet. That when they sit and they get the nectar out of the plants, they will shake the, um, I believe it's a pistil, which is the center of the flower and pollen is often on there. And then a little part of the flower called anthers. These are both sites where pollen can be held. When bugs land on it, it shakes the flower and pollen will drift off. And it's not just bees and butterflies. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every bug has hair on their legs that pollen will get stuck to. Bees are just like so fuzzy Mm -hmm. that they are optimal for pollination. And next we need to talk about pests. (sighs) Heather, what are your least favorite? Oh, I don't like the aphids. Uh, Those are little bitty buggies that like... If you don't pay attention, they get under your nose, under the radar, so to speak, and they will tear up your green leaves. Like, they love the tomatoes. They especially love the peppers. Um, I don't like them. I don't like the June bugs. June bugs will wreak havoc in your garden and the little green worms, not the earthworms, not the butterfly worms, any, or whatever, caterpillars, not those. No, the little green grubbies. Inchworms, maybe. Maybe. They're a little green and they like your leaves. Because I have a lot of things that have leaves on them that I grow. I don't like those. Um, another fan I'm not a fan of is I love cats. And I love animals in general. But we have a lot of feral cats in our neighborhood and in here around town. Um, they like to use my garden sometimes as a litter box. I'm not a fan of that. Right. So those are the things I'm not 
few drone pest wise. Um, I don't usually have too many problems with squirrels or birds per se in the early stages. I will, but I have a couple ways to prevent those. So. Right. Um, so for small pests, mm -hmm. as she mentioned, we have those June bugs, we have the aphids, the little green worms, which may or may not be inchworms. I don't know. We'll revisit that and let yes. you know if we're correct or not. Um, and then for bigger pests, we obviously don't have this problem in town, but deer, um, mm -hmm. rabbits, I've seen a few. I've never had an issue with I'm them. Um, cats and squirrels, especially cats. Mm -hmm. The issue with those using your garden as a litter box is any um, bacteria, parasites, bad things in their body if they put feces into your garden. The ammonia it, in the urine. It can yeah. actually get into your plants and kill them. Yeah, it's not great. A uh, way you can counteract the cat urine, I think, is coffee grounds. Yes, coffee grounds. Right, and, um, but yeah, so be very careful about that. We mm -hmm. don't want you to get parasites, and we don't want your plants mm -hmm. to die. So just, you know, be careful. Um, what do you do to keep different pests out or different pests away? So, like, this year, last year, the cats were really bad in our neighborhood. I noticed a very big uptick in the last few years I've been done a garden. Um, this year, I've got my beans I'm going to be planting. They like to be in my beans. For some reason, they like my bean patch. <laughs> so, it, they grow up a trellis or a cattle pen panel that is made into an arch so this year what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and um, maybe rework that redo something make something a little bit more different and more permanent that's not gonna bend down as easy and I'm gonna add some kind of doorway that the cats can Ooh. get through so kind of like make my own little archway and fence with the door for that so the cats can't go through that they usually don't mess with the tomatoes because tomatoes actually have kind of a pungent smell with the uh, greenery to them. They don't usually mess with those. Um, I do that. And then I'm not an all natural, all organic kind of person. Um, sometimes I will be, sometimes I won't. Just depends on what it is. Um, the thing I found most that works for the aphids, the little green rooms, and the um, June bugs, I'm a firm believer in um, seven dust. That's what I use as a pesticide. And where do you get that? You can get that anywhere, but usually when I do my gardening, I'm like running back and forth up here to the hardware store, Nettle Creek Hardware Store, and I can just get it in the insecticide area or they have it even sometimes they'll put it out in the greenhouse and be like, hey, this is good for this, this, and this. Right. I am a little bit more natural mm -hmm. in my pest control, but um, I grow things that aren't natural pest controllers. Like mm -hmm. I have a marigold bush in my garden. Um, fun fact, I actually planted several marigolds in my garden and only, I had four, only one survived because the others, it didn't look like an animal had chewed them off or anything like that. It looked like a clean cut. <laughs> And so the head of the flower was just like a couple of inches away. The rest of the plant wasn't hmm. bent, damaged. It was like someone was just like, get out of here. Interesting. It was very weird. But the one that did survive grew into a really big marigold bush. I actually let it go to seed because mm -hmm. um, marigolds to animals, and I've noticed it a little bit, but obviously animals smell better than we do. Yes. Or they have stronger senses. Um, it's very, it it's has a bit of a to gross. Them. Yeah, it's a bit of a gross smell. If you mm. really stop and sniff a marigold, it's not pleasant. Not really. Um, and animals, especially deer, don't like it. Uh, so that is a natural way. We used it in Minnesota for our garden because we did live out in the country and we did have a lot of deer around. But once we planted those marigolds, we never had an issue with that again. Mm. Um, I also have rosemary in my garden, and rosemary is another really pungent smell. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very bitter. Obviously, if you guys cook with rosemary, you'll know that distinct. It's a spicy. Yeah, and when it's um, grown, it's sticky, mm -hmm. and it's also very strong. Like, I'll be standing just next to the box and... You know, I'm five foot seven, so I'm not small or close to the ground, and I'll just smell it through the mm. air. I can smell it at my back door. It's, you know, yeah, I find it pleasant. Yeah. I love it. I use it in a lot of things at home. Um, one thing that I've been meaning to make, and I'm about to butcher this name, so please forgive me. I think it's focaccia bread. 
Um, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about, but I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, it's like a loaf of bread. You put olive oil on it and then rosemary and some, like, salt or other. Fukushima. I don't know. Maybe. One of the two. One of them. We'll We're find not out. very well worse than other languages, apparently. No. Or breads. No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I grow that. Some other ones you could use are lavender and peppermint. Mm -hmm. Lavender and peppermint both actually attract honeybees. Yes. They also attract wasps, mm. which is another natural pest killer. They scare me I'm not to afraid. death. <laughs> <laughs> she calls them little demons, let's I be do. honest. I do. If I see one, I I tail it. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I the, did think of another one I've mentioned in a really early video of ours, like one of our first or second videos. Um, this is how I was taught to train my dog, like when we lived out in the country, Duke. Um, it is you take cayenne pepper, put it oh. in a squirt bottle water, fill it with just regular water, and squirt it around your perimeter because the way I was taught with my dog, because we lived out kind of out in the boonies, um, if we didn't have him on his leash or whatever, um, if you sprayed around the perimeter at least once a week, um, it's kind of on a weekly, every two week basis, um, depending on how much cayenne you put in there. Their first, uh, an animal's first instinct is kind of sniff and make sure things are safe, and if they don't like it, then they'll go turn away and, you know, back off of that area. So that is, that is one pesticide i forgot i do use or a natural deterrent um i will use that on occasion and then i obviously i forgot i have rosemary in my garden as well so i i kind of a blend of organic and not organic right um your inorganic pesticides can be bought mm. at any hardware store as we mentioned i believe in our last video nettle creek hardware mm -hmm. store has several options yep. go and support them um i i am hesitant about using inorganic just because the risk of runoff it can hurt um you know creatures that are actually helpful to the environment mm -hmm. and to your garden some of it can affect bees and obviously we want to keep those guys alive because yes. we need them so i'm a little more hesitant to run those especially if you excuse me Live next to a creek or river, right. the right. runoff can risk um, actually changing the oxygen levels in the water and mm -hmm. thus kill fish and other um, microbacteria that are important for that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, another thing we can do is when I talk about slugs or snails, mm -hmm. I have those really bad at certain points in the summer. Like I use table salt, like I dye salt, and that's how I kill them. Mm -hmm. Or I, um, my husband's grandpa, he was a avid avid gardener even to the end um he would take rock salt like you get for your water softener he would line around his garden area and whenever you know the slimy little snail slug would crawl over it it actually gets stuck in kill it for lack of better words um Sorry. and but it would prevent it from going into your garden and eating up some of your nutrients and your leaves can you buy that at a hardware store as you well you can yeah okay i cool. mean if you have a water softener you can get that salt just rock salt whatever all right or just regular table salt i just pour it over them <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little seasoning yes yeah, a little seasoning a little spice <laughs> a little spice <laughs> um some natural pest uh control are our favorite wasps uh spiders I have yes. a ton of wolf spiders in my garden. My rule is <laughs> not in my house, not my problem. You guys stay over there. I stay over here. Be cool. Yeah. You guys feast. <laughs> Do whatever you like. I personally don't mind spiders. Like, if I notice I have quite a bit coming out of my basement, because, you know, every basement has some type of bug, unless you, like, mm -hmm. religiously spray, like, once a month, twice a once a year, whatever you do. Um, I keep a couple around. I know it sounds silly, and I don't name them. I've been asked this big question before. Um, because they actually take care. They are a natural pest control, and they take care of the other little bugs that your house can get and or the outside as well. So if you have your doors open constantly, you're going to have flies. This little pest house flies. Um, they take care of that for me. So yep. I am very pro-spider. Um some people aren't. Some people definitely are. I'm for them as long as they don't start multiplying at a vigorous state in my house. <laughs> yes. Um, I have a few that I will spare in my house as well. I have an attic, and they may reside there, but they <laughs> cannot come into my living space. Yes. yes. That is my rule, and they know it. 
But, um, yeah, I have my door open. I have cats, and I have a glass screen door Mm -hmm. that they love to, you know, lay down in that sun. And they love watching people go by my house. Um, So, you know, I keep spiders around just in case. Mm -hmm. But I do definitely have them more out in my garden. I actually have a doghouse from my dog, Charlie, who recently passed. But, um... They lived under his doghouse, so the first time that we tore it down and rebuilt, it was a colony. (laughs) It was a little terrifying, but now that I actually have them in my garden, I had between marigold, rosemary, and spiders, I had zero pests in my garden, and it was Mm -hmm. a blessing. Yeah. So keep those guys around. Don't let them get out of control. Mm -hmm. Let them know their boundaries. Yes. Um, (laughs) Another great um, pest control or I guess predator, that a lot of people I know love are dragonflies. Mm-hmm. They scare me. They scare you? Anything that flies scares me. <laughs> I don't like birds. I don't uh, like... Just, uh. Another one I find is praying mantis. They like other bugs. Along with their own kind. <laughs> they scare me too. I love praying mantis. They are really awesome to watch. They are interesting. Yes. So yes, bugs are your friends. Mm-hmm. They're creepy. They're kind of gross. But some of them will help you. Yep. Um, Another thing, she mentioned birds. Um, Birds are actually important um, whether you like them or not. They have a big um, task in when they make a mess everywhere, what is called that way. And what they eat and then they digest and it comes out. um, They actually have a big role in replanting things because most of the time they'll eat berries they'll eat some kind of vegetable starts whatever and sometimes they will get some seeds they actually help the environment to recoup and right. replant mm-hmm. so just keep that in mind yeah uh so like i said all of these things are kind of gross kind of scary kind of weird birds have beady eyes and they squawk all the time but they're really helpful mm-hmm. in keeping your garden safe yep. Um, birds are, like Heather said, good for replanting. Um, I have blueberry plants and I decide, or I prefer to keep the birds out of there because Mm -hmm. blueberry plants, as I may have mentioned, are really hard to grow here in Indiana anyways. But, um, in terms of other plants, they're definitely very helpful. Sometimes they will eat pests, like, off your leaves. They will. The only downside to birds are when you have your plants and they're starting to mature and they, um... Sorry if that interrupted you guys. If they start to mature and they get their blooms on, um, I especially have to deal with them with my green beans Mm -hmm. and my pepper plants. So what I do is I get kind of a stake of whatever, like a wood stake or whatever I've got around my garage or house. I'll stick it in the ground, get a piece of yarn and tie it um, around that at a high, very, like the, almost the tipping high point of it. And then I go to, or even save them, um, metal pie pans or aluminum pie pans pierce a hole through it, run that other end of yarn, and it's a natural noisemaker in the wind, so that mm-hmm. will keep the birds out for the first few weeks once your um, vegetables or fruits start mm-hmm. blooming, because they really like those blooms and the early, early, early little veggies that start coming on. Right. Um, something that I'm planning to do is actually get a bird feeder and put it closer to the front of my yard, away from my garden, so that the birds, you know, that are by my house say, mm-hmm. oh, look, free food. And they go and get that rather than going into my garden where, you know, I Mm -hmm. actually would like to have that stuff. Yeah. So there are different um, kinds of methods. Something that we didn't talk a whole lot about are inorganic pesticides. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they can be bought at any hardware store. Basically, it's um, a lot of chemical compounds of sulfates. Uh, one other one that I forgot to mention is diatomaceous earth. It's really Mm. similar to rock salts, but it has a lot of different properties as well. I actually use it not only as a pest control, but it's safe to mix like maybe one eighth or one fourth of a teaspoon into wet cat food or wet dog food and give to your animals. And it can actually help. It's basically like an all natural, um, parasite protector it will like if they have tapeworms or something like that it will help protect your animals from that so Mm -hmm. if you want some if you love your neighborhood cats you know and you don't want to risk them getting hurt that's something that you know is considered natural not that chance so next time we will be talking about um harvesting and then 
also after your stuff. So cleaning up your garden, taking up structures and things like mm -hmm. that. And that will be the end of our basics of videos. Yep. And then once we have finished all of that, we are going to take a break and begin some interviews with some wonderful local gardeners. Keep an eye out for them. And just, you know, if you have any helpful tips and tricks, please leave them in the comments. I believe I asked this a couple videos ago. If you guys have any seeds you would like to see in our catalog, please let us know. Yep. Um, ones that are most commonly seen, we will order to have them. Um, that way because since the season is coming up and yep. technically speaking indoor uh starts have already begun yep we can have those for you if you guys are mm -hmm. you know ready to get going start sewing yeah that rhymes i love it yes <laughs> um but yes so that's something that that's basically the plan for you guys um if there's any specific plant that you would really like to learn about once again leave that in the comments we would love to get feedback from you guys or just stop in if you guys are getting some books just stop miss heather or i and just yeah let us know what you think we'd love to hear your opinions it'd be very helpful to us but yeah but yeah like she said a lot of people will stop and talk to us um mm -hmm. this is actually these videos were actually inspired by a patron that was very curious she goes i am very garden dumb basically I'm not garden savvy at all, um, and she goes that we we kind of bounce some ideas off of her. So mm -hmm. we try to talk to you like you're you know one of us, and we love your suggestions, and we really do take them to heart. And this video is kind of a proof that you know we do those kind of things for you guys to help you guys out. So yeah, as our community, you are part of our team, yes. and we're here to work with you and work for you. So once again, leave a comment, come in, just. Mm -hmm. You know, give us a little shout. I'm here um, pretty much every morning. And then Miss Heather is always here at least three days out of the week or mm -hmm. so. You can always catch her in the afternoons or some mornings. But, yep. yeah, without further ado, we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.